All right, so this drinking fountain problem combines pretty much every concept we'll need to use in fluids. Um, so let's get started. I'm gonna, it's a long problem. I'm gonna work through it piece by piece. Uh, and I've, I've drawn the little setup here. So most of it is, most of it's down. So our first question is we're asked, what is the velocity of the fluid at point one. Well, the fluid, it starts down here at the pump and it goes shoop out of the nozzle and then it, it flies out and then it gets to the top. And what does it do at the top? Well, it stops, right? It stops and it falls back down. So, the fluid velocity at the top is zero, right? V1 is equal to zero. And this is something we know from any object we throw it in the air, at the top of its flight it stops and it comes back down. The second question asks about the relative pressures at all of these points at point three, point two, and point one. Well, at point one, we know for sure we have atmospheric pressure, right? The fluid stopped, everything stopped, we have atmospheric pressure. We also know that we have atmospheric pressure down here, right? The fluid, as soon as it leaves the confined space of that, uh, it is just water molecules in free fall, flying up in the air and flying back down. I guess it's like projectile motion. The pressure on all that stuff is just atmospheric pressure. The pressure down here well, we know that all of this fluid is weighing down on top of the mouth of this pump. And so this pressure must be greater than atmospheric pressure because it has a bunch of uh, fluid weighing down on top of it. So if we rank them, P1 is equal to P2, um, and both of those are less than the pressure at P3. And I accidentally erased it, trying to erase everything. P1 is equal to P2 and is less than P3. So we're left with a ranking that P1 is equal to P2 is less than the pressure at P3. Okay. Part C asks us to find the velocity of the water Part three asks us to, so part C asks us to find the velocity of the water at point two. Okay, so and asks us to think about which one is better, Bernoulli's equation or the continuity equation. Well, the continuity equation tells us about how the velocity changes when the thickness of a pipe changes. Right, But the only velocity we know is the velocity at the top here, right? That's the only velocity we know. 
So if we want to find the velocity here, then we have to use this velocity. Okay. So something that compares the velocities out in the open, that's just Bernoulli. Bernoulli can help us do that. So let's write down Bernoulli's equation. So we have, uh, we imagine starting at point one, or it, starting at, well, fluid is going up like this, and it's a streamline, so we know that point one is equal to point two. So fluid is flowing up from point one to point two, so that's a streamline, and so we're going to use Bernoulli between those two. So we have the pressure at one plus one half rho one v one squared plus rho g h one is equal to p two plus one half rho one v two or rho 2 v2 plus rho 2 g h2, right? Um, P1 and P2, those are both atmospheric pressure, so they cancel each other out. We also know that v1 is actually equal to zero. That's just what we found out. And we can rewrite this equation as one half rho 2 v2 squared plus I guess the thing is is the density isn't changing this is water it's an incompressible so let's make rho 1 equal to rho 2 equal to just rho uh, plus gh2 oh, <laughs> is equal to rho gh1 Okay, so we're looking for the velocity, so let's solve this for the velocity just a little step further. V squared is equal to, I move that over and factor it out. Well, I guess the first thing to do, all these rows cancel out. That's the nice thing. Uh, and we are left with 2 times G times H1 minus H2. Okay, and then V2 is equal to the square root of this, which I get to be 1.77 meters per second. Oops. Meters per second with all those. Okay, so that's C. So part D asks us about So part D asked us asks us about the velocity at this point here at point 3 coming out of the nozzle, right? So what do we know? We know that the fluid has traveled up here and gotten to point 2 and it's gotten to point two at a certain uh, diameter of pipe, and it started at a different diameter of pipe. So the fact that we're given two diameters of pipes, this is a key thing that should make us think, oh, this is uh, a continuity equation problem. And so I'm just gonna do it right here so we can see it. So we're told that D3 is equal to So we're told that D2 is equal to one third D3, which implies that A2, right, the area that is equal to one ninth the area at three, right, because, um, right, because we get areas of circles by squaring 
uh, radii, which are half the diameters. So when we square the ratios, we, we get one ninth to come out. So we have the continuity equation. The densities aren't changing. We have the continuity equation that tells us the velocity of two uh, times the area of two times the amount of stuff through point three. which we can rewrite to get area three over area two. I'm just gonna put a line here, just to, is equal to V squared, oh, V two, which is equal to V two over nine, which is then equal to 0 0.20 meters per second. So that's how you use the continuity equation to get the velocity at point three. So the final thing is the pressure in the pump, right? That's the, that's the final thing we have to do. This is part E and it's a challenge thing, but I think we can all do it. So we're gonna use Bernoulli for this because we know all of the velocities and we know all the heights and we have a good idea of the pressures at one and point two. So if I know all those velocities and heights and everything, and I know the density, then I can use all that stuff to find out the pressure down here. So I'm gonna use what I know about point two and what I know about point three to write a Bernoulli equation. So the pressure at three plus one half rho V three squared plus rho G H three is equal to the pressure at two plus one half rho velocity at two squared plus the density times G times the height at two. Okay. So there are a couple things here. So H3 is actually set to zero. So we get to neglect that. Um, P3 is the pressure at the pump. So P3 is the pressure at the pump is what we're trying to solve for. P2 is actually P atmospheric, right? That's something we've learned before. So we can rearrange this equation up top to get P3 is equal to one half rho V2 squared minus V3 squared, right? Plus P atmospheric from here, plus rho G H2. And when we plug in all the values for this, though I'm not gonna write them all out, the values I get are 112,400 Pascals. So this is indeed more than atmospheric pressure, which we'd expected. So that's a nice little check. Um, there is a thing just to give you the gauge pressure. Um, so remember the gauge pressure, P gauge is equal to P three at the pump minus P atmospheric. And so that would be 1.14 times 10 to the four Pascals is what I get for that, right? So this is the pressure above atmospheric pressure that the fluid has to be supplied to the fluid to shoot it all the way up the fountain and to make it come out so you can drink it.